So welcome to part 11 of Learn Go. And in this video, we're going to be going over the range concept in Go programming. So if you're coming from a background in Python, this range concept will most likely be pretty familiar to you. In Python, you've probably seen a pattern that looks something like this for looping. So for i in range, let's say 0 to 10, and then print i. So you've probably seen something that looks kind of like this in Python, where you're looping over this particular range, which is really just a list from elements of 0 through 10. And then in every iteration of the loop, you're doing something. In this case, we're just printing out the index, the, the iterator i. So we're just doing that on every loop. And this is just a concise way for us to loop through a certain number of things in Python. So it's going to be a similar type of idea to this in Go as well. So let's see how we use this concept in Go. So I'll put a comment range is similar to range in Python. So what we can do, let's first of all, let's define something to loop over. So let's define a string array. And we'll say this is colon equals, this is a string array. So we'll start with the open square braces, close square braces, it's of type string. And let's just go ahead and define some values in this string array. So we'll just say A, B, C, and D. So we'll do it like that. So now let's loop through this using the range uh, function. So we'll say for i comma str, actually, let's say c, colon equals range, and then string array. So let's break down what we just wrote down. So basically, we're returning two values here from this range function that's operating on this string array. So the string array is what we're looping over. This c is the in this case, the character, as we go through the loop on every iteration of the loop, c will represent on the first iteration, a, next iteration, b, c, and the next one. And then i is just going to be the index on which we're accessing the string array. So it'll start off at 0, 1, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and print that out just so that's clear. So we'll say format.println, and first let's go ahead and print out the index. So just say index, and then we'll print out i. And let's go ahead and say print line c, uh, well this will be, yeah, c, and then we'll just print out c. So we'll go ahead and write that, clear the terminal, and then I'll run this particular piece of code by saying go run 11 underscore range dot go. And if we do that, we see that the index initially is at zero. The first character that we encounter in the range, as we range over the string array is a. Next iteration of the loop, index is set to one. And then we encounter this as our string, so that would be b. And it just goes through in that way. So it's pretty natural, especially if you're coming from a Python background. So another thing we can also use the range function for is not just iterating over things like arrays, but we can also use it for ranging over maps. So can also range over key value pairs in maps. So let's go ahead and define a map and we can see how that looks like. So we'll say m colon equals map. So we'll just define a map which is string val uh, string int key value pairs. So we'll say this is a map of string keys and int values. Let's go ahead and just hard code some things in there. We'll just say the, the key a corresponds to value one and the key b corresponds to value to, let's say. So let's go ahead and range through this thing. So we'll say for key value colon equals range m, since we're ranging over m. So in here what we're going to do is we're going to just print out the key and the value as we iterate through this map. So we'll say format dot print len, print line, and then we'll say key colon k, and then we'll say val colon, and then V. So let's go ahead and print that out. We should see A1 and then B2. Let's just go ahead and verify that's what we see. So the key is A. That's the first one that we're iterating over in the first iteration of the loop as we're ranging through those key value pairs. And then the next one is B and 2. That's all we need there. So we can also loop through a map in a way that does not um, print out both the key and value. So maybe we just want to iterate through the map in such a way that just displays the key. So we can also do that. So we can say for k colon equals range m. So we're ranging over the map. Let me just put a comment above here to distinguish what we're doing. Can also just, just range over the keys in maps. So here we'll just print out the key. So we'll say format dot print line and then key colon k. Let's just go ahead and see what we get there. 
and we just get the key. So maybe that's for one specific instance of iterating through a map, we're only interested in looping through and looking at the key, and that's how you would go about doing that. So that's pretty much all we're going to cover right now for the range concept in Go. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. The code will be hosted on my GitHub page and that will be the link will be uh, in the description below to this video. Thanks again for taking the time to watch and have a great day.